Good morning. For the last several weeks, we have been circling back to this theme of needing to have a childlike humility to enter the kingdom of heaven. And last week, we talked about how money can be a challenge for people to enter God's kingdom. And Jesus concluded with the statement, but many who are first will be last and the last first. Today we will listen to a parable given by Jesus illustrating the statement. But first, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before you this morning and we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace, your mercy, all the blessings that you have graciously given to us. Father, at this time, we pray that you will help us to set some of the distractions aside. We pray that you will fill each one of us with your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray that you will help us to hear your voice. Help us to seek your face. And Lord, we pray that our worship to you will be acceptable before you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So now let's turn to Matthew chapter 20. Let's look at verse 1 and verse 2. So after Jesus teaching that we will be rewarded far more than what we have given up for his name, in addition to receiving eternal life, Jesus then says, but many who are first will be last and the last first. Now the parable from Jesus. Verse 1. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the workers on one denarius, he sent them into his vineyard for the day. So in this story, the land owner actually represents God. And the vineyard is the place that we live on earth, wherever that may be. And the parable says, early in the morning. Now, unlike modern times where we would usually work eight hours a day, um, that is if we are a full-time worker, People in those days, in Jesus' time, would typically work 12 hours. So the typical working hours would begin around 6 a.m. and it would finish at 6 p.m. So that's 12 hours. And one denarius was the wage for a day's work. So a day's work again being 12 hours. But in this parable, the denarius represents eternal life. And if you've read this parable before in the past, you would realize that the vineyard workers are the Christians who will be receiving eternal life. So th this parable is actually talking about Christians who are serving God on earth and receiving eternal life. That's the parable that Jesus is sharing. So according to Jesus, the land owner hires workers at 6 a.m. in the morning. And the typical workday was divided into four three hour blocks of time and the works day would end at 6 p.m. So the landowner hires the first group of workers early in the morning at 6 a.m. and they agree 
to work the full day for one denarius. Again, that is the typical wage for a day's work. And he sends them to the vineyard to work. Verse 3 to verse 5. So Jesus continues and says, When he went out about nine in the morning, he saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, You also go into my vineyard, and I'll give you whatever is right. So off they went, about noon and about three, he went out again and did the same thing. So the landowner, after hiring workers at 6 a.m., now he goes back to the marketplace again, three hours later, so that's 9 a.m. in the morning. And the Bible says there were people doing nothing Meaning, they were still looking for someone to hire them for work. And, and the landowner sees some people doing nothing and tells them, you also go into my vineyard and work. And he does the same thing at 12, 12 p.m., which is noon, and also at 3 p.m. Let's look at verse 6 to verse 7. Then about 5, he went and found others standing around and said to them, Why have you been standing here all day doing nothing? Because no one hired us, they said to him. You also go into my vineyard, he told them. So here at 5 p.m., remember the working day is almost over. The working day ends at 6 p.m. So that's one hour before the day's work is over. Again, the landowner went out to the marketplace and he sees some people just standing around doing nothing. And he says to them, why are you just standing around all day doing nothing? And they replied to the landowner, no one hired us. Now, remember what Jesus said right before he started sharing this parable. He said, but many who are first will be last. And the last first. See, the workers that were hired at 5 p.m., they were the leftovers that no one wanted to hire. Remember, they were standing around and waiting at the marketplace the entire day, since early in the morning. But they were not chosen until the very last hour. Likely, they were the most unskilled and the most unproductive workers that nobody wanted. But the fact was they continued waiting because they were desperate. They needed money. And now this is where it gets very interesting. Let's look at verses 8 to verse 15. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard told his foreman, Call the workers and give them their pay, starting with the last and ending with the first. When those who were hired about five came, they each received one denarius. So when the first ones came, they assumed they would get more. But they also received a denarius each. 
When they'd received it, they began to complain to the landowner. These last men put in one hour and you made them equal to us who bore the burden of the day's work and the burning heat. He replied to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me on a denarius? Take what's yours and go. I want to give the last man the same as I gave you. Don't have the right to do what I want with what is mine. Are you jealous because I'm generous? So when the work day was completely over, the vineyard owner, which is the landowner, wanted to pay the workers. And this is where he took everyone by surprise. He began paying the workers who started work at 5 p.m. And the ones that started at 6 a.m. right early in the morning, they were paid last. So the people who worked for one hour, they were paid one denarius. The same amount for those who started at 6 a.m. in the morning. Now, how would you feel if you were one of those workers who were hired at 6 a.m. and getting the same pay as those who only worked for one hour? Would you, would you think that it was fair? Well, it happened to be the case that those who worked 12 hours, they were really upset. They thought it was so unfair. Nevertheless, the landowner replied, I'm, I'm doing you no wrong. Didn't you agree with me on a denarius? So you see, the landowner did specify the wages beforehand. And, and those that worked 12 hours, they had agreed to those terms. But, but think about this for a moment, okay? Don't think right now about those who work 12 hours, because again, that's a typical day's work. They're supposed to be paid one denarius. But I want you to think about, okay, think about the workers who only worked one twelfth of the entire day. That's one hour. One hour of the entire day. They too received one denarius. Now, why would the landowner do that? See, this story is not really about being unfair or unjust to those who worked 12 hours because that's the amount that they were supposed to get paid. This isn't really about the workers being taken advantage of because again they're receiving exactly what the landowner had promised them this story is about the landowner's generosity to the other workers the other workers that were hired in the last hour these leftovers, these workers that nobody wanted to hire. See, 
It's not unfair. They were not cheated. The ones that worked at 6 a.m. They were given what was promised to them. And that was a denarius. See, the story is really about the landowner's grace for these last workers. Remember, they were the ones who were the most unskilled, the most unproductive workers. And, and this is why that they were standing there in, for the entire day and no one wanted to hire them. But yet, when the landowner went into the marketplace and he saw them standing, doing nothing, but willing to work, he took them in. See, in God's kingdom, none of us, none of us deserve to be his workers. And all of us have fallen short of God's perfect standard. We cannot bear the character of God. We cannot have the ability to do the work that God wants us to do. In fact, for us to be accepted, Jesus had to die on the cross so that we could be accepted into his kingdom. And he had to give us his Holy Spirit so that we could have the power and the ability to bear his character and to do his work. This is why in God's kingdom, we should be humbled because of the grace that we have received. None of us deserve to enter God's kingdom, but because of His grace upon us, we are accepted. See, Jesus wanted to share this parable with his disciples. Because, remember, they had served Jesus ever since the beginning of his ministry. And they had received the knowledge. And they had received the ability to do God's work. But because of that, there, there was a danger. There was a danger of believing that they deserved more than other people. And as a result, they may become prideful, starting to compare themselves to these new believers as they were ministering to the people. They would start to think that how much more they have done because they have started with Jesus from the very beginning. And may, they, may have, they may start to believe that God ought to reward them more. And to even have other people to praise them. See, for those who are Christians, anyone who is watching this right now, and those who have followed Jesus, and even those who have served in the church. And this includes myself. We face the same danger. We need to remember that we are undeserving, immature, sinful, and prideful. Now, honestly, when we read, and, and now when we're listening to this parable spoken by Jesus, some of us may feel that it's still not fair. If we're really being honest, some of us would not be happy about this. Because you see, God's standard for us, His children, are not the same as the world standard. 
See, we, we live in this world where it's all about me. It's not about other people. It's about what will I receive. It's about the benefits I will get if I do something good. We, we live in this world where often people smile at other people's misfortunes and celebrate at people's failures. Why? Often it's because it makes us feel better about ourselves. It's very self-centered. It's so selfish when you, when you think about it. And if we are not careful, we can think that we are deserving. Thinking, I've been a Christian for a long time. In fact, I've been a Christian all my life. I've been serving in this church for many, many, many years. You know, I'm better than this new person at the church. I'm better than this new Christian. I am more knowledgeable than him. I am able to do God's work better than him. Church, we can let our length of time of being a Christian, our knowledge of scripture, our ability to serve, our quiet time, our tithing, our offerings, all those can make us feel that we are better. And we will stop being humble. And we will stop being grateful of God's amazing love and His amazing grace. Let's look at verse 16. Jesus says, So, understand this, in God's kingdom, the last will be first. And the first last. Those who know that they are completely undeserving, and those who know that they do not ought to receive eternal life. Those the world puts last. In God's kingdom, they are the ones who are first. Jesus says a childlike humility is needed for us to enter God's kingdom. If you are here today, either in our sanctuary or watching this online, and you know that you are sinful and you are completely undeserving to enter God's kingdom, Jesus wants you to know this morning, the kingdom of God is for you. Jesus has already died for your sins and for all of our sins on the cross. And he is offering you his Holy Spirit. So by his power, you can obey and you can serve him so that he can be honored in your life. If you have not made that decision today, let me invite you to do so. Let him guide you into his kingdom. It's not too late. Jesus says, the last will be first. And the first last. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the reminder this morning. We thank you for the message. Often we feel that we are all deserving 
for the things that we have done that is good, things that may be pleasing to you. And as a result, we therefore think that our rewards should be greater than someone else's. Father, we struggle with the values and the things of this world. It's all around us. And sometimes we don't realize it penetrates our hearts, our minds. And we think those are the standards that we're to live in. But Father, you remind us that the world standards are different. Help us to follow your standards. Help us to live the life and the ways you want us to live. Lord, we are different. You have called us to be different and help us to do that. Father, I pray that those who have not yet received Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray that you will also soften their hearts. You will humble their hearts and they will realize that they too are undeserving, but because of your grace, you will accept them into your kingdom. So Father, I thank you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.